let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. So I want to thank all of you for joining. Um, you know, this is um, this is a great opportunity um, for me um, and for Grow um, to share. You know, um, these opportunities um, for education, um, understanding how to build accordingly. We talking about building a brand and um, and understanding the value of capital. Because at the end of the day, that's really what it all boils down to, us understanding um, the value of capital. So I really want to appreciate you all taking your time, and I want to make sure that I deliver um, accordingly. So um, this webinar is, 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 is the core of its focused on is um, really um, emphasizing the importance of, of branding. And, and why it matters. Um, and um, for me, branding, um, if you don't hear me, if you have a question, the chat, let me know. Um, and I'll make sure I, I, I can get, I can be clear for you. So branding for me is, um, you know, it's the essence of your message. It's, it's, it's how you um, 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 are received in the marketplace. And a lot of times we, um, you know, we kind of reverse engineer that process uh, to more, more or less thinking about the product and service versus about building a brand first so that the product or service and the brand idea, which is the intellectual capital, it actually fits in what we call on, you know, in another, in another webinar, a market a market fit. So, you know, Grow um, is, has been really intentional about um, helping, you know, especially, you know, women businesses, minority businesses understand the value of, um, of, of growing. And, and we connected because our thought patterns were the same. And so this is a good opportunity for that, for just us really diving in to understand the brand. So as I go forward and I speak about um, Oric and creative branding guy, Ricardo, I'm gonna keep it brief because I really don't wanna make it about me or make it about Oric. I really wanna make it about this education. And so um, I just been getting some skin in the game, um, experience um, and um, in, this, in this space um, really heavy um, for probably about eight years, um, I've dealt with some of the, you know, some of the who's who and some of the smaller people that want to be who's who. And um, I've had the, um, the, 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 like the blessing of being able to connect with all these individuals, because at the end of the day, um, at ORC, our core focus is about building brands, building successful brands. And the way that we do that is through a philosophy we call SDE, which is a is an acronym for strategy, design, and engagement, and we believe that if you have a, a like a thorough balance of strategy, design, and engagement, then you'll be able to have scalability. Um, you'll be able to create what we call capital resources. And when we start to talk about capital, we're talking about it's like multiple forms of capital, and and we can't really get off into like these layers of capital right now, but we, I really want to emphasize the value of capital in a capitalistic society. Like we're not in, we're not overseas, we're not in another country. We're in America that has been founded on a capital, a capitalistic structure, and so that capitalistic structure is relevant in 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 business, especially in American business, because American business, small businesses have than what has um, kept this country moving. So it has to be some rules and some and some things that's like tenants that's in place that you can't remove or you will have like some basically taking the rails off from up under a bed, the bed's gonna fall down. Taking the foundation from up under a house, the house will fall down. So when it comes to business, there are certain things that we have to have no matter who we are, you know, it doesn't change from skin color, like the education for building a brand is the same. And the only difference is that some communities have had the opportunity to get the education, to get the guidance, to get the, have the opportunity and resources to grow. And so therefore, 
as the times change, we're in a whole other era. We, I'm wearing a mask. You know, this is a mask. So I'm wearing a mask. So like we are so we were actually living in some movie times. And so the value and like the 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 seriousness to to do what you need to do, it just becomes a little bit more um on the clock. So that's or and so when we move into like this brandy matters, the first thing I want you to think about is like your brand, like your brand, your brand, your brand, your brand. Like what what what, what is it? What explain this brand to me, explain the brand to yourself first, first explain the brand to yourself. So that's something that I think is critical is you understand your brand. So there's like, so the core of your brand comes down to is your mission. So I really want to emphasize brand. Like I really want to emphasize the word brand. And so your brand is birthed from your mission. So your mission is basically your purpose. Like, why are you here? Why have you come to the marketplace? Why have you arrived? And once you understand that, then you can start to solidify or define your brand. But there's one thing I want you to really, really um, um, taking consideration when you're thinking about your brand. Don't be afraid to create your brand because it's your brand. It's not Ricardo's brand. It's not Rosie's brand. It's not Emily's brand. It's not Stephanie's brand. It's your brand. And so therefore you have to value your creativity and allow it to take its course. And when you do that, you start to define yourself. And, and, and these are one of the things that really, really helps with a brand is because you start to define yourself. And so when you start to define yourself, you start to create this brand personality. And so this brand personality becomes its own unique self, right? So it's no difference than you and your best friend. You, your best friend has um, their own personality and you have your own personality. And so that's what happens when you become to understand who you are as a brand. You start to, you start to get this brand personality and then people, which is the marketplace, customers, partners, community allies, they start to pay attention because your personality is, is speaking to them. It's speaking to them. And so once your personality once your brand, um, once you think about your brand the right way, then you're able to create your brand the right way. And once you're able to create your brand the right way, that brand begins to, um, um, to develop a brand personality. But then that brand personality puts you in a position where you have opportunities available. And these opportunities are very, very rich. Like they're rich, they're, they're super rich, but we don't pay attention to them. So you have our opportunity for what we call ROC. Nah, it's not a rap song, but ROC. So that's our terminology for return on capital. And because at every level of building your brand, there's some form of capital that you have to come, you know, that you have come have to come in contact with. So if we talk about, you know, the thinking stage, the ideation stage, that's intellectual capital. That's what you call intellectual capital. And honestly, it's some of the most valuable form of capital that we have. Why do you think big corporations will pay millions and billions of dollars for your idea? Because at the end of the day, the intellectual capital is the root for all any other capital. If you don't have an idea, then you have nothing else. So intellectual capital is one form of capital. Then you move to something we call social capital. We live in a world where social capital is king right now. Like if you don't have social capital, you're nobody. You know, people, people wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, like at 4.44 in the morning to check to see if they got a light all about social capital. 
you know, but the, but the, but, but you got to be careful with social capital because social cap, cap, capital can create a, an illusion because it's based off people's opinions and a objective. So tomorrow, if people change their opinion about you or the objective changes, then you lose social capital. So social capital is, can, can fluctuate. Then you have the next thing on the route is financial capital. Because once you have the intellectual capital and once you have the following, then you have the ability to create, um, to maximize your financial capital. And last, not but not least, but I, I like to put on the list is emotional capital. And emotional capital can best be defined if you think about companies like Apple, Google, Nike, um, Chick-fil-A. I don't know why those lines are so long all the time, but yeah, those are form of emotional capital where people actually do things unconsciously because they enjoy the brand. And these are all elements to building a brand. And I know that we can't get to the root right now and you know, right now um, in our webinar, but I wanna be able to make sure we, we, we understand those things. And is there any questions or, you know, thoughts when it comes to us talking about these different forms of capital, how they play into your brand? Feel free to unmute yourself or uh, type something into the chat box, whatever is easier. Um, and I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but at any time, if any questions, I know I know I'm open to it, Ricardo, you too. So any any questions or anything, feel free to unmute yourself and just pop into the conversation. Hi, my name is Rosalinda. Can you go over the social capital again, please? All right, so social capital is your following. So it's it's a it's a it's a form of human capital. So it's it's the pe people that are interested to your brand um, that follow your brand because they like the service that you provide, not because they like who you are. Just because the service or the product that you provide to the marketplace, it makes sense and it makes it more convenient for their day to day dealings. And so that is your social capital. Thank you. And if 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 you look every like so when you check on um, you know your Facebook or social media and that that those that's social capital and you you got um, a movement right now where it's basically social capital generated and that's um, this brand influencer. So companies, big companies, will pay um, me, you, Rosie. We just gotta get our followers up um you know nice checks just because of our social capital um even if we could have even if just say we have a million followers there's no accuracy with it but that's what our social capital is the goal uh rosaland is to is to convert your your social capital into emotional capital because once you convert your social capital into emotional capital what you do is create retention, which is called customer retention. And so now these customers are not one X, but they're maybe two X or three X are coming through the door more than once a week, you know, maybe three times a week. And so the goal is to switch, you know, um, to put, to transition that social capital to emotional capital because emotional capital, I mean, social capital is great, but it it's kind of fluffy. It's still, it's not the real core to understanding, you know, the, the value of your brand. <laughs> All right, so, um, um, so as we go, go on, we want to um, talk about just brand, um, brand education, um, and why it becomes of importance to you, to me, and to the customer, to your target market, um, <clears throat> and to your avatar. And it it's because of what I call value. So 
when you, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I use sports in an analogy, but it's not all, it doesn't always work because everybody doesn't like sports. But it's basically like you waking up one morning and realizing that you have a gift of sewing or a gift of shooting basketball or a gift of dancing like a swan. Like you find out one morning, like, wow, like, man, I got some unique value. And so that's kind of what it's like when you really unearth the value to your brand. Like all kind of lights just pop pop up like, wow, I could do that. Wow, I could do that because now you know who you are. And so it's not, it's not like, it's not hard for me to believe that, you know, most micro business owners, which micro businesses, you know, anywhere less than four, four employees, um, small businesses, you know, four or five or more, but the micro and small business owners, it's not hard for me to believe that sometimes the lights don't come on. And the reason why the lights don't come on is because you don't, you haven't took the time to understand your brand. And for me in this space, um, I've learned like, uh, I cannot hold my clients up. I have to let them know the truth. And the truth is that some, some education is, or, or some knowledge we all don't have. And we have to make sure we, we find the right areas to make sure we ensure the right education is happening, excuse me. And so when you get to the point where you unwaken and un un unearth the understanding intellect of your brand, like you understand the value. So now you are like, okay, you go from this inferior little child to, to this, to this, to this teenager that's the developed and and, and 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 has got some popularity. So now you like, now you feel you relevant. And so with that relevancy, um, you are able to to do some things with your relevancy. What most brands should be working for is to be able to scale. And you should be able to scale. Like what? Why would I be in business for 30 years just to walk step by step incrementally through my to my dreams? How frustrating would that be? How frustrating that I have to walk through a whole desert before I get to the gold pyramid? Like I probably wouldn't even make it to the pyramid. And so that's how, like building a brand like for year for 20, 30 years and never had a result that you truly want because you never understood your brand and you never scale. And so understand your brand, understand your value, understand the resources to grow allows you to scale. And in and, and the world we live in today, businesses scale at an exponential rate, exponential exponential you know if you don't think that what i'm saying makes sense go do your research so just just think about in 2011 it was probably like i'm, I'm guesstimating it may be about 20 unicorn you know unicorn companies are companies that are that have been billion dollar ipos on wall street so it was like about maybe 20 maybe less maybe anywhere about 10 to 20 now over 30 over 40 over 50 because the rate to scale the rate to reach your customer the rate to the rate to touch the market the rate to uh, ensure capital is it's, it's, it's right there for us if we do the right things effectively and of course building a brand is trial and error but one thing that I will say that you must do when you understand your brand in the process of creating your brand, think and act, think, act, think, act, think, act. Don't think and feel because if you think and feel too hard, too long, the action gets watered down. And so when building a brand, think and act, think and act because you learn about your brand every time you have an experience with your brand. The, if you limit the experiences that you have with your brand, 
how will you know what your brand needs? You won't even know your brand. You're you basically just like an external customer because you don't even you're not familiar with your brand. And your familiarity with your brand because comes because you understand where the, what's the sweet spot about your brand. You understand what we call a J factor. So this is one of my favorite terminologies. Um, J factor is a short, short um, breakdown for the word Jordan factor. Jordan factor. So I hope everybody, and if you don't know about Michael Jordan, you should, one of the greatest players ever. You know, he did it. So when it comes to building a business, you know, we try to really hone in on what's your J factor? What's your Jordan factor? What makes you different than everybody else? The same way Michael Jordan made the Chicago Bulls different than everybody else, bottom line. So what's your J factor? What makes you different? Think about that. We're gonna take a small little pause, but I want you to think about what's your value? What's your J factor? What makes people get up out of their seats, touch their phone, um, um, tell their friend about your brand. Sorry about that. So Rosie, uh, we could um, go to um, um, page three. Absolutely. And as people are thinking, I would invite you to unmute yourself or if you have that J factor that just popped right into your head, go ahead and share it with us. That'd be great. So while we, so while we briefly um, like get into the, start talking more about this brand education and kind of making it more interactive. And so um, asking you all some questions. Uh, we also want to open up our giveaway. So we had a giveaway um, where we wanted um, business owners, brand owners to talk, tell us why your brand matters in, in seven to 14 words. Um, and what we would do, we would take the top two um, according to how we feel, um, how, according to what we feel, uh, uh, understanding of a true brand is, and then we will reward the top two um, with a story on a grow website and um, a free hour of consultation with none other than yourself, uh, creative branding guy. So if that is something that's, that interests you all, um, we will, um, can we put it, we'll probably put it, we'll put an email in the chat and you all can uh, send your responses to that chat. And um, in the next couple of days, uh, me and Rosie uh, will go through and uh, decide on uh, who we should um, designate the winners. That sounds great. I'll go ahead and put my email in um, and if anyone's interested in submitting something, uh, feel free, feel free to send it to that email. Can you please um, describe um, what we are sending in? The assignment, please. Oh, um, sure. So we, um, what we will be sending in, we are, um, we asking you all to write down in seven to 14 words, why your brand matters to the marketplace. So we really want the goal with this task is really for you to unearth your value for you can understand it. But the seven to 14 words is for you can be able to share that with anybody anytime because it's quick and concise and you know, and you didn't, you didn't just pack your value into those words. So whatever you say to any, when you tell them your brand, they get it off the rip. And so that's really the goal of the seven to 14 words, trying to educate at the same time, trying to elevate, because once you do it, it's going to take you to a different level for you understanding your brand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Um, so <clears throat> we will talk about, so on the screen, we, we, we talking about brand education. And when we talk about brand education, it's, it's, it's the things that I've talked about, you know, um, since this webinar started. And it's just multiple components of, of understanding, um, you know, um, and deciphering um, the value of the information that you've given on a, on a daily basis. And one of the main things that you want to look at when you when you think about creating a business or a brand, you think you're creating it for somebody or someone or or some place, and you got to be able to have a solution. Like you got to have a solution. There's no, you know, especially nowadays when everything is saturated. Like every market is saturated to the top, to the tilt. So you have to have a solution. And so one of the things that we want to, we ask these brands are, what problem is your business solving? Like literally, like what problem is your business solving? And we have to understand this. There's nothing new up under the sun. Like there's nothing new up under the sun. So what's happening in, in like, these days is what is called, um, um, they stacking like technologies, like they putting technologies on top of technologies, like stuff that's already been created. They just adding another layer to that creation to make it unique or to make it different, but there's nothing really new. So it's just add-ons and innovations to make the car a little bit more dynamic, to make an airplane a little bit more dynamic. Like they can never get back what the Wright brothers did. Like, so it's only layers and layers and layers. And so when you think about building your brain, like what problem am I solving? You can't be, and, and if you're trying to solve the same problem that the, the next 30 businesses are solving, in my opinion, that's, going to be a rough journey because the competition directly and indirectly is intense. And when I say directly, um, I want to say, for example, if I am a burger shop and I sell, uh, and, and I'm a burger shop, I sell burgers, McDonald's is directly, um, directly my competition. However, any other, other restaurant or business that sell French fries, because I sell fries too, is an indirect competition. And so when you get in the space that's completely saturated, your direct and indirect levels of direct and indirect competition it goes, off, goes off the wazoo. So the best thing to do is get a market where it makes sense for your brand. And a lot of people have went and have went into niche markets because they're smaller and they're more controllable. And that makes sense. However, niche markets have a cap. Like there's, there's only so far you can go in a niche market. Like it's a cap. There's only so many customers you can tap in a niche market. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, but what problem is, you, are, is your brand solving? And another thing that you can think about when you're thinking about the solution that your brand is bringing to the marketplace, I want you to erase the word problem out of your mind. Erase the word problem out of your mind because that already gives a negative connotation to the task that you have at hand. So it, like replace problem and, and we use a, a solvable, something in search of a solution. So you're looking for a solvable. You're already looking for something that's going to be rewarding before you even get to it. So think about a solvable. Screw the problem. Think about a solvable because it makes more sense for your brand. And so that's the first step. That is the first step in my book. If you cannot discover the solvable, that you're creating a solution for, that you're about to invest heavily in, 
to enter the marketplace to ensure you get maximum receptability, but the market is saturated and you create no real solution, it makes no sense. Like it should be, this building brand should be about winning. Like building brand should not be about failing. Like we always, we always get lost in this fail, fail, experiment, learn path. Fail, experiment, learn path. Like why do we have to fail? We don't have to fail. It's people that win consistently because they position themselves to win. And so when building a brand, we have to get away from, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna move at a fast pace. I'm just gonna try this and try this and fail and fail and fail until I figure it out. I failed and failed and it's not a good feeling. So I'd rather win on a daily basis than constantly failing to learn. I would like to win because I can win and learn as well. If you're humble enough, you can win and learn. You don't have to fail and to learn. You know what I'm saying? Just have humility and every win you will learn something different. And so, um, that's the process. We don't, we, we don't have to, we don't have to fail. We can win. All right. And so if you gotta figure the solution out, and it gotta be applicable to a real world dilemma. It has to be applicable to a real world dilemma. I have to just say this, just 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 for the sake of those people that create things that nobody thought would ever use. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Sometimes that's, it's that idea that you, you didn't think it would work and it works. Cause I know I was walking Shark Tank one time and they came out with that squatty potty and I swore that was not going to go anywhere, but it's in every store now. <laughs> So sometimes we just have to find our find our brand and find our flow. And if if the market fits, then we we go, then we move forward. And it's one thing that I haven't mentioned, um, and I should have mentioned um, probably 10 minutes ago, is the value of the data, the information, like the information that you can collect, the data that the research you know, of understanding the market. Like that's the other fit. That's, that's because you can build a brand, you can build a brand that you believe has a viable solution for the marketplace. You can build a brand that has, it's rich in intellectual capital. Um, following is super huge, but, but, right? But in the process of building that brand, all those things can say, check, 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 check. But if you get to the research and the research says, oh, customer X doesn't like this. Customer X will not use that. Customer X prefers this. Customer X spends this amount of money on this. Customer X geographically doesn't think, you know, if all those things say no, then it, the data is a little bit more fierce because the data is based off, you know, um, like past predictive models. Model like that data has been proven. Like the data has been proven. Like this validity has been proven. Your brand is still in the validation stages. So therefore, you have to lean on what's valid versus what's becoming valid. And so that's why the data is really huge. Like you have to be a, like, if you really want your brand to turn the corner, if you really want your brand to, to be different than, 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 than brand C or D, you really have to be an information nut. At the same time, be on the informational diet because you gotta make sure you don't take in the wrong information. You just gotta be laser focused allowing that information, that data to roll over off into your strategy, like strategy. Um, and so when you are able to understand it, uh, um, 
understand what you're solving, decide if it's applicable, then you move to a point where your, your value prop is able, you able to strategize around your value prop. So your value prop is your MVP, you know, your, 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 your UV, you know, call it whatever, it's special, you know, but it's, it's what you build your strategy off of. And so like you build your whole, your core strategy is basically built off that, that value prop, like that J factor, that UVP, like how valuable you are. It's all built off that. Your, the decisions you make from like team members, um, 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 website development, colors that you use, all these things are based off that strategy. Like that, I mean, based off that, that value prop. And so you build, you just build around, you build that strategy around it. You just, and so that strategy, you like basically outline it. It's all mental, you know what I'm saying? So you basically outline that strategy and you're about to bring it to life based off that MVP that you are going to be able to use to solve some real life issue in the marketplace. And as you start to, <clears throat> as you start to um, develop that strategy, that strategy easily, easily allows you to see your design more clear because you know exactly what doesn't work for your brand. Like your message are, is being fine tuned in that phase. Strategy to design, your message is being fine tuned through that stage. It's being crystallized. It's this rough, raw material in the strategy phase. You know, you, all the junk, you wash them, throwing all the, the, the gook away, you can try and get it all together so that you can be effective. And so as you progress to design, then you start to, your, your brand is crisp, it's, it's getting crystallized, not just physically, but visually as well. You know, like it's, it's endearing itself to the physical senses in this development. And, but we never pay attention to that. So you take, this just the thought. It's like, so the brand was a thought, then became something in real life. Like that's physical, metaphysical type stuff. If we really take it to that level, but we're not, you know, but that's the, that's the path that your brand goes. It's really making it, you know, you know, valuable to the world. It's being birthed. And then once it goes to the phase of design where it's crystallized and, and, and you enjoy it and, and, and visually it's just, it's just like motivating and, 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 and create the right vibrations. And then you transition to the whole engagement. Like now this brand, this, this brand has matured to the place that it can engage with its avatar or customer whatever cool name you have for the target market that you're trying to reach. Um, and so that's kind of like the path like that you go on on building that brand. So that's why the education is valuable because if you don't have the education, you know, none of this stuff that I'm speaking or half of this stuff that I'm speaking may seem foreign because lack of the brand education. So opportunities like this. So opportunities where you able to, to, to share, you know, with your community, um, like the, like true value and like, it's huge. And we can't miss these moments because if we do, then we miss the opportunities to take our brand to the next level. Um, so is there any questions or concerns um, or thoughts when it comes to us talking about um, brand education? So if um, for the for for some of the people that are here, um, can any one of you all tell me like about some that you believe your UVP is? It could be rough. Right now it's just a thought. 
Does anybody want to share about their UVP, their J factor, their value prop? What's going to attract their customers in the marketplace? I'm still figuring out my business, Emily. Okay, um, Emily, so what is your business? So Emily, since you were like, since you were, had the confidence to step forward and share with us, you know, um, let's talk about your business real quick. Let the creative branding guy give you a little information. Helps your business. All right, so. Emily, uh, online retail. Okay, online retail. Who who is your target market, Emily? And and and, and that. And don't get intimidated, not one bit at all, because this is the process that we all have to go through when we develop our brand. So don't get intimidated, because it's all love. I want you to I I want you to understand your brand because then you make the marketplace a little bit better. All right, so you're looking to make jewelry and home decor metals. Okay, so that's kind of unique, using metals with jewelry. So that is definitely unique because you can kind of get your own space. So I would like to um, ask you, is there any um, um, jewelry companies, online jewelry companies, that you know that you um, have seen or admire that kind of kind of like fit your brand that you're trying to um, create. And the reason I say that is because it's critical for you to know who your competition may be. And if you understand your competition, then you understand Okay, Veronica, okay, photography, um, okay. So, Emily, real quick. So, seeing who, all right, so Celtic, okay, they coming through, transitional housing for women, okay, okay, okay. So Emily, so definitely that Celtic not work, I definitely feel that's gonna be unique in itself. However, being that it's so unique that you have to craft that brand so that it's interesting for everybody that have this un unconventional bias in their head. Like, so automatically I'm like, what the heck is that? So that thought, what the heck has to be, you have to reroute that thought in, in opening something unique like that. As well, though, I believe it's a, a great opportunity to have fun in that space. Um, but you want to make sure that you understand the competition. Direct, don't focus on indirect competition. Just focus on direct competition right now because it, it gives you the opportunity to understand like what's what are you able to do in the marketplace and like what your business model can look like and who you're going to really be competing with. It helps you structure your prices. Because now you look at a competition and say, okay, they're here, I'm here. Like it makes you understand what's your um, break even. It also allows you to see um, your profit margins. So like if you have to compete with this person, you have to raise it up $2, now you understand your profit margin. And so those are some elements um, that, um, that you can think about. If you want some more information, you know, maybe you should try the giveaway so you can get some more time. Um, so next was Veronica. So Veronica, you said, um, help me out, Rosie. I'm trying to unmute myself. Veronica, it was a portrait photography. All right, portrait photography. Okay, Veronica. My opinion, I just come forward. I'm blunt. I like to be, keep it that way. Photography, saturated, super saturated, Veronica. Super saturated. Like, I'm a photographer. I got my phone right here. I'm, I'm your competition, Veronica. I'm your indirect competition. Everybody with a mobile phone, Veronica, is your indirect competition. So therefore, those are the people that you have to compete with for a client. 
So just think about that. And so in thinking about the photography, now you have to think about how can you spin that? How can you spin that model where your competition isn't the average person with a mobile mm -hmm. phone? And once you can do that, or how can you be valuable from a portrait standpoint with the person with the mobile phone? Because it's just a saturated marketing. And if it's a passion idea, I say go for it. If it's something that you're passionate about and that you want to build this brand and you want to, you know, you want to pass it on to your kid and pass it on to generational, like that's cool. And building that brand is just as important on building a brand that you want to scale and, and sell. So don't don't let me you know, don't let my words dissuade you when we're talking right now, right now, we're talking about building brands so that we can scale. Um, uh, like over time. So I just want to make that understood. So next we had um, Jasmine Tierra. She was talking about transitional housing for women. So I think that is a, a, a good idea. I think that transitional housing for women will be huge because, you know, um, you know, it takes a, it takes a, it takes a, a community. It takes a community to build a community. So I think it's a wonderful idea is connected to a huge um, cadre of social capital. That is definitely a social good um, initiative, like social capital, people support those things, nonprofits support those things. And those nonprofits support those things. And that brings you, um, that brings you financial capital and, 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 and taking care of those women brings you emotional capital. So there's layers of capital there. And I think really what will make that idea different is the intellectual capital. Like what type of intellect, like the idea itself, how is this transitional housing different? How does it cater to more levels? Um, how does it cater to more levels of, 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 um, of interacting or engagement or of, of upliftment um, um, for these women? And so there's a lot of areas of capital that's available there um, um, and this opportunities, just it's opportunities there. And you just got to really make sure that it, it aligns itself with the community too. Now, oh, I almost forgot y'all. Slap my hand, slap my hand, slap my hand. I almost forgot about location. Location is key to location ain't the end of all, but it's critical. It's critical. So when you're thinking about these businesses, location and the catering to that demographic, that's huge too. I mean, not huge in some of the things that we, we talked about because when your brand is, is amazing and it's successful, you can land anywhere. It's this song I be listening to and it's a bosses park where they want. And so when you build your brand the right way, you can park that brand wherever you want. You know, if you want to park it in the Sahara Desert, you can park it in the Sahara Desert. You want to watch park it in Washington, D.C., you can do it. You see Walmart, you see, you see the Googles, you see the Nike, they park wherever they want. So when you build your brand the right way, you can park wherever you want. So the you know, location only becomes a factor when you're a small guy. All right, so chat been going crazy, Rosa. You need to help me out. It is, yes. We have Rosalinda, um, is, she's interested in jewelry and she said also cake making. Uh, she was gifted a cricket machine. So I think still exploring some, some ideas and some options, but sounds like a, a good idea. Um, and then Emily, Emily popped in and said she has a product that uh, she calls fidget wear, clothing garments that have fidget elements embedded into them. Um, so very interesting ideas. Oh, yeah, that's very interesting. So if I go, I'm gonna start at the top, you know, just I want to make sure everybody get they, you know, get they do. And so Rosie, so you, your creativity is like, it's, it's rolling. I see it. You have an idea, you have the passion, you have something that you want to get out. And um, you have jewelry, you have, you like, you learn how to bake cakes, and you have a cricket, a cricket machine. So those things that's, that's a lot so I, what i would say rosie would i mean uh, i would rosa linda i would say bring it in so maybe two of those things that you can couple together you know and and, and, and 
and, and make it and make it work. Maybe it's the the cricket machine and the jewelry. So maybe a t-shirt and jewelry shop, you know, or a t-shirt, a pop-up t-shirt and jewelry shop. Maybe you just test it out like a pop-up shop and you bring your, your t-shirts that you made and your jewelry that you made and you test the model out, you know, test the model, see if it works, see who's coming for what. And what might happen is a lot of people may be, may come for the jewelry, nobody may come for the t-shirts and therefore you just unearth your jury idea, or they might come for the chief shirts or the whatever you've done with the cricket machine, and therefore give you an understanding of, of, of what's next. But however, you're in the you're in the you're in the thinking stage. And so you have to act right now, Rosa. You have Rosalinda, you have to act. You have to do something to get some answers. And if you don't do anything, when if I if I hear from you again, you'll be telling me, Ricardo, I still got that cricket machine. Um, so, um, I have a question, if you don't mind, since you're um, talking back rather than me typing. Um, okay. So, I've been getting into the earring making and experiencing with uh, cakes. I got a long way on the baking, but I do enjoy it learning. But being relatively new, and like I said, I can do earrings pretty well, and I've even tried the tumblers. It's just that there's so much to make. How, how, like when you brand and everything, how soon should a person feel like they can start a business just because they've learned how to master something versus, because I'm not going to learn and know everything about a cricket, but starting a business how do you know when you should now open it up to this, you know, to your, so that your demand doesn't get overwhelming? All right. So I got two answers for that. So my first answer, and it's more, it's the conventional answer is that you're ready to start business when you have a customer, like seriously, like, you know, if we want to talk, you know, rules, like, when you have customers, like, then you're ready to start the business. And, that, and before that, it's kind of like an idea that you're building on. However, I will say to you, if you've done the research, you understand your brand, you've mapped out a mission, you mapped out a vision, um, you've done the research, and the research says that the market will receive you with some grace, then go for it because all those things are say yes. So there's no reason for you to say no. And so those are just my two. If you have a customer, it's business time. And if you have the brand essentials in place, it's business time. Um, um, I hope that answered your question. Um, I wanna jump to Emily real quick um, um, because the time is, you know, time is getting short. So a product that, that I call fidget wear, clothing garments that have fidget elements embedded in them, and I receive the, that's huge. So um, Emily, like you, you, you have, your intellectual capital is of huge value because you have a professional pack. And, and, and now you have a product that if it, once it gets to the marketplace, Anybody that, use, that uses that product will have to pay you because of that pro provisional patent. Um, and so um, if with this product, I, I mean, at this stage, I would just love to hear more about it because it seems like it's, it's kind of dynamic. Can I ask you, what does the fidgets do in the garment? Sorry, I was trying to unmute. <laughs> um, they, I developed them because my kids all have ADHD. And so they would creatively use any fidget that's out there. And it was more of a toy. And I would put um, pellets into the hems of the shirts for them to play with. 
and they're there, they can't throw them, they can't use them inappropriately, they can't draw attention from their friends. And so every counselor, every therapist we would go to said, that is a genius idea. And I'm like, it's simple. People can do this themselves. They're not going to buy it. So finally, one of the OTs my boys went to convinced me to try to go ahead and start doing it. I've also put um, the pellets into palms of sweatshirts, and that helps a lot with anxiety as well as the attention. Mm. So... How long, um, how long have you, uh, when did you create this? Um, actually, my boy started using them about four years ago. Wow. So have you tried to sell? So, I haven't. Um, I kind of, until I got the patent, I was kind of tight-lipped about it just because um, I did some research and the fidget industry is so huge that I really didn't want this idea to get out there because I do think that it probably would take off pretty well. So um, now that I have my patent, I'm just kind of starting to move forward with everything. And um, right now I'm struggling with even just learning how to get it manufactured. Manufacturing is just not in my wheelhouse. So I'm just starting from scratch, but I've got about 10 months until I need to apply for the actual patent. So I need to get going. Yeah, so, um, you know, so um, the manufacturing and things like that, what I will say to you right now is um, just think small scale far as the manufacturing, because once you get the right partner um, with the right resources, they will they'll map out the manufacturing part like hands down. And I think that as you start doing the small things and start just kind of like focusing on the small steps, um, you're probably going to run into some manufacturer or somebody with that knows somebody that has that can do the manufacturing, but you have to start moving. But one thing you want to do before like a, a idea like this, you, that's connected to um, that's connected to um, health, like health or medical, like like recovery or relief, right? So these are like really, they, they, these are the, the big companies look at these type of products kind of like, like, okay, show me that it works. Like, like you have to show them that it works. So being able to start to get something done on a small scale and doing some product testing to make sure that it works is really where, it, is really where it's at because your, um, your um, like um, outcome data is really what investors are going to look at. And it, it has to work for a, a, a group of people being that is connected to the mental health recovery relief um, industry. Does that make sense? Right. Right now I have about, yep, I have about 50 shirts out right now that I've given to like OTs um, within elementary schools, as well as just their own therapy practices um, and some other counselors and stuff like that, that my boys have worked with through the years. They have helped me and just dispersed a bunch of different items for me. So I do have about 50 out right now being product tested. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so um, no, um, I would love to hear more about the idea. You know, I, I kind of get ecstatic about these unique, innovative ideas um, because I believe in Grand Rapids, especially in Grand Rapids where I'm from, I don't feel like these ideas are uh, uh, um, optimized or maximized uh, to their capacity. I remember maybe about, um, this is 2021, so maybe around 2011, it was this idea called Zip Mints that was created in um, Holland, some, some individuals in Holland, Michigan, and some individuals in Grand Rapids, Michigan had got together. They created this company called Zip Mints. It was basically on-demand carriers uh, for UPS, basically like UPS, but you could just, just how you can do um, 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 DoorDash, um, to deliver food, you could deliver packages. Before Amazon went crazy, this was before Amazon went crazy, um, there were some people in Grand Rapids couldn't get any funding in Grand Rapids. And so they left and went to New York and ended up getting like $2.2 million funding 
like the next six months and they've been off and running, but nobody heard about them because most people are now on the East Coast. However, if that idea would have been created in Grand Rapids, we'll have a, a really amazing company in Grand Rapids by Grand Rapids people, tech related. Now more people want to know about Grand Rapids because we're doing something different. So yada, 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 the story goes on. So we got to make sure we maximize these opportunities when we have a chance. And so Emily, you have a great idea. Um, if you, I would love to hear more. Um, I'll leave my email in the chat um, for anybody to have more questions um, and more thoughts. I will be able to share myself with you via email. Um, if you need to have any questions or concerns and um, be able to keep you um, abreast um, so that the next webinar that comes about that you guys are available. And man, I'm like, y'all should feel like, I'm excited. This is my first webinar and you all are my first. Like, you know, <laughs> you're my first, you're my first group. You're my first group that I have educated from a webinar basis. I have done podcasts for three years, um, but this webinar um, is different and it's, um, it's allowing people to understand your personality and understanding you from a business perspective um, and to ingratiate yourself with your knowledge and your intellect so that you can eventually help them get to the next level. And so our time is 2.05, we're running over. I'm gonna put my, I'm about to put my um, email in the chat and I will be looking forward to anybody that have any questions and um, Emily, feel free to reach out um, and to share more about that idea. Um, and I'll be looking for that as well. Um, Y'all continue your day, continue to be effective, continue to motivate, continue to edu educate and elevate um, and, and just don't give up, you know, don't give up. And don't before up. we, before we sign off, I just wanted to thank you, Ricardo, for all of your information and, and to everyone who joined us today. Um, I know Veronica, I saw in the chat, you were curious kind of next steps. And for any of you, um, Emily, Veronica, any of you who, who did or didn't share, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you at Grow too. We have business development officers on staff um, who can kind of help you with those next steps. Um, they'll help you with the business planning aspect as well. Um, we have community volunteers uh, for certain expertise or um, different things uh, who we are always happy to connect you with. So please, please take advantage of these connections. Ricardo's been gracious to give us his contact information and, and all this knowledge. And, and certainly we hope this isn't the end of your connection with Grow. And uh, we hope that you reach out and, and we can help you as you continue this entrepreneurial journey. So thank you all so very much for joining us. Yes, yes. And I'm gonna leave you all with be golden or not. Like you can win if you want to, or you can lose if you want to. It's your decision solely up to you. Peace. Thanks, Ricardo. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Take care. <laughs>